orchestra, and uh, I'm a composer. Um, they don't always meet, but occasionally we do meet. Um, I thought I would chat a little bit about the relationship of the composer and the orchestra from the beginning, because it's changed a lot, and uh, it's important that we know where we are now and where we might be going in the future. Obviously, composers were always necessary for orchestras, and in fact, in the early world time, composers wrote hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pieces because the orchestra, which was then basically strings with a few winds for solo instruments thrown in, had no repertoire. So there was lots of music written. And then we go into the classical period, and all of a sudden, these orchestras started adding those winds and some brass and a timpani into their orchestra, got a bit bigger, and Haydn and Mozart and Schubert and various other composers needed to fill the new vacancy which is music for a larger ensemble. And then Beethoven enlarged that in his fifth symphony. He added the trombones and the piccolo for the first time in the symphony orchestra, the last movement. And they became members. In the Romantic period, people uh, invented instruments like the tuba. In Mozart's day, the clarinet came in. And by the end of the 19th century, we started getting these large orchestras which needed many more strings, uh, big wind section, big brass section, mainly a moderate sized percussion section which was going to grow even more in the 20th century. And all that time they needed repertoire, which means they needed composers. I mean need, really need. So the repertoire was always expanding, uh, even though uh, Mendelssohn rediscovered Bach that doesn't mean that Bach was the main ingredient on concert programs in Mendelssohn's day. It means that Mendelssohn <coughs> rediscovered him and played him, but there was a lot more of the music of their time. There were a lot of Schumann pieces and Brahms pieces and, 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 and Wagner pieces being played in the Romantic period than there were early music being played, and that's because the orchestra needed that. Beginning of the 20th century, it got really big. When we get to the Strauss and Mahler and even Stravinsky early pieces, type orchestra. Then we get to our super orchestras, uh, the kinds that the Pittsburgh Symphony is now and that many major orchestras are with a large bunch of winds, brass, and an expanded percussion section. Mahler certainly enlarged that, and Debussy enlarged it too in his way by adding unusual instruments, and all of a sudden that section grew enormously. And then we're here now, say in 1915 or so, and we have this very large orchestra. And now the growth of the orchestra ceases. The saxophones are not led into the orchestra for very strange reasons. Usually, I think it had to do with economics and uh, even a union problem. But they never became members of the orchestra. Um, electronics started in the early parts of the 20th century, amplification, etc. That certainly did not become a part of the orchestra. It was absolutely not allowed in the orchestra. The orchestra was acoustic sound, even though the popular music fields started using amplification and other things, and started changing, therefore, the way they operate. But the orchestra stayed the same. We now have the same orchestra that existed 100 years ago. We can call in some other players to play for special events, but they're not on the payroll. They are not employees of the orchestra because it's a fixed type. And once you have a fixed group, 102 musicians or whatever. What tends to happen is you tend to re-churn and replay the repertoire for that group, which includes now 300 years of music and some of the greatest music ever written from the Baroque to the beginnings of the 20th century. So the orchestra started living on that repertoire. Um, and by living on that repertoire, they had less of a need for the composer. The composer became uh, uh, a little spice that gets added to a concert rather than the main ingredient. Um, and that continued pretty much up to this day. In fact, it still continues now. We can look at um, other <coughs> art forms and see that that really wasn't the case. For example, look at the American music theater or music theater in general, and you can see the constant progression um, in terms of uh, the kinds of works were written early in the 20th century, the Gilbert Sullivan operettas, changing into the musicals, the musicals.